Hello everybody, my name is Eric Huffman II. Most people call me Huff. Some people know that I love going to the movies. And Thor Love and Thunder hits theaters on July 8th. It will be the 30th film of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the fourth film about the God of Thunder himself, Thor. But I figured that now would be a great time to take a step back and examine the film where it all began. And of course I'm talking about 2011's Thor, directed by Kenneth Branagh and the uh, fourth film of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, Thor, as it's simply titled, really does introduce us not just to Thor, but to the entire realm of Asgard. And it opens up the doors for where Marvel would go as far as exploring the cosmic side of things. So we don't just get introduced to Thor and we don't just visit Asgard, but we spend a lot of time there. We get a lot of the history. And something that I think director Kenneth Branagh did very well in this is in recognizing that Thor is not the same type of character as Spider-Man or Iron Man or Captain America. He really took the time to um, flesh out the way that the royal family of Asgard and the different warriors there uh, operate and how they interact with each other. So through the first film, um, I remember going to see it in 2011 and I thought it was okay. Um, when I did a marathon of the MCU back in 2019 uh, pre to prepare for Avengers Endgame, a lot, of my, uh, a lot of my criticisms were pretty much the same. I thought it was really a tale of two different movies. There is the story of Asgard and who is going to take the throne, uh, but then there was the story of Thor crash landing on Earth. Um, Upon my most recent rewatch, though, I think that this film is just a solid, entertaining entry. I still do think that the moments between Thor and Jane Foster are the least memorable parts, but what I really enjoy about this first Thor film is how director Kenneth Branagh really makes it a point to build out the world of the different realms of the cosmos. So not only are we being introduced to a very charismatic Chris Hemsworth, who I think may have been among some of the best casting that Marvel's ever had, but we also get to learn about how he relates to the other characters of Asgard. We see what his dynamic is between himself and his father Odin, played by Sir Anthony Hopkins. We see the different dynamic between him and Tom Hiddleston, who is probably the breakout star of any of these films. We see how he relates to his friends, Lady Sif and the Warriors 3. Um, and to me, all of those things work so much better and they're so much more engaging than some of the awkward fish out of water romantic comedy that we get when he crash lands on Earth. Now, of course, for people who have never seen Thor, the basic story goes as this. Thor is the son of Odin, who is the ruler of Asgard, and he oversees everything going on amongst the Nine Realms, uh, but Thor is getting ready to be crowned the king, and he is ready to step up and take over the throne. But uh, when an enemy of Asgard attacks and hurts his pride, uh, he lets his ego get in the way, and that, of course, incurs the wrath of Odin, who then banishes Thor from Asgard and strips him of his powers. And so... The film is really about Thor having to redeem himself and prove that he is worthy of the powers that he once took for granted. Um, and this, of course, took place before the Avengers, and so this was a way to really flesh out Thor's character before he was going to be interacting with characters like Iron Man and like Captain America. And this film does not have the same instant jolt of energy like the first Iron Man does. Thor is a very different character. He's not quite the Boy Scout that Captain America is, and this was not really a reboot of anything like The Incredible Hulk was. So this was, for Marvel, probably their first really big gamble to see if audiences could buy into the fact that in a world where there is Iron Man and the Hulk, that there is also a magical space viking with a hammer. Um, but I think that the cast, I think that the visual effects, I think that the world building of Asgard especially, um, really do keep this film um, a pretty breezy, entertaining, solid watch. I wouldn't say that this is a game changer in the superhero genre, but I think that Thor is a worthy entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and a really good first look into uh, a character who had been around for, for a long time in the comics, 
but who had never really been an A-lister. Um, I think that the performances of Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston especially really elevate the material here. And Kenneth Branagh's um, tendency to make this feel like a Shakespearean tragedy almost, I think it really adds a, a bit of an emotional weight to it that, you know, makes it hit a little bit harder. And I can't emphasize enough just how impressed I was looking back on how good Asgard looks. Everything from the way that they um, made the Bifrost look, everything from the production design inside of the Asgardian castles and the, the, the armor that the different warriors wear. I really do uh, think that if Thor is a film that you have slept on or a film that you haven't thought a lot about, um, as we prepare for Thor Love and Thunder, I do think it's worth a revisit. I think that it is, um, you know, maybe not a top 10 Marvel film, but it's definitely a solid entry, definitely an entertaining time. And uh, in a decade filled with a entire gamut of superhero films, some of them were great, some of them not so much. I think that Thor is definitely one that is worth your time. And it's not even two hours long, so you won't really feel like you've spent the whole day <laughs> watching Chris Hemsworth. Um, but that's all that I would have to say about Thor. I have more reviews coming for Thor The Dark World and Thor Ragnarok, as well as a video about the things that I am most looking forward to going into Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, so that is all that I have for today. Once again, my name is Eric Huffman II. Most people call me Huff. You stay sweaty, my friends. I'll see you with the movies.